The day has arrived, people. We are announcing who is jumping in the cage with Steele and I to go toe-to-toe in a fan-based fantasy league. And we also have some big-time signing and some must-listen draft preparation content. Let's get right to it, baby. Happy Friday. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to your show. It is the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast with Steel and Flip, Friday edition. Another jam-packed episode, people. I teased it off the top. Steel and I are amped up to announce the 10 listeners, the 10 fans out there who submitted their interest, who are jumping in the league with us. Steel has all of that information ready to fire. So thank you for tuning in and thank you for making us your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Steel. Also on today's episode, we have to take a look at some of these must-draft players for this season. We're not exactly looking at those de facto top five. We know you got to be taking the McKinnons and the Matthews McDavid's of the world. But some of those pieces that you and I have talked about all month long, maybe two months long, that we have to just remind the listeners out there that they're the key to your success this season. We're going to get to that too. But... I'm going to hand it over to my main man, Steele, because there has been a lot of interest and much love to those people out there showing that interest in this league. We have the 10 listeners. I'm going to spin it over to Steele because this is what you're probably tuning in for for today's episode to see who's going <laughs> in the draft for Monday night. Steele, take it away, my brother. I'm going to ferme la bouche for a little bit. <laughs> Thank you, Flip. And I just want to thank everyone out there as well who, you know, left comments on our YouTube videos, who DM'd us over Twitter. We got over, I think, 30 or 35 DMs on Twitter, you know, uh, over 10 comments on the YouTube channel as well, wanting to participate in this fan-based fantasy league. So I just want to give much love mm -hmm. to all of our fans and listeners out there for all the DMs, all the support, and all the love out there. So thank you so much for that. With that being said, we have our 10 randomly selected guests who will be joining us for this yes. fan base fantasy, the date and the time and the entry fee. We put the poll out. The entry fee will be $20 yep. for this fan base fan, fan, uh, fantasy league. So $240 overall that will be broken down uh, over the next couple of weeks of whether uh, first, second place and third place, uh, you know, divvy it up that way. Flip and I will talk about that, but Again, the date for this fantasy draft will be October 10th. We know it's Thanksgiving. We know it's the long weekend, but it has to be done before the start of the regular season on the 12th as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the time for this draft is 8 p.m. Eastern time. So we didn't want to put it too early where we're getting in the middle of Thanksgiving dinner, but we didn't want to have it too late where we're drafting till 11, 30, 12 at night as well. Yeah. So 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, October 10th is the date and time for the the fan base fantasy league. So be prepared for that. And with that being said, we'll dive into the 10 randomly selected fans, listeners who will be joining flip and I for this league. Yeah. And Starting I think off, I would say this deal just to make it clear. Don't stress. If you don't exactly hear your yeah. name reamed off or you missed us or something, the list is set. You're going to get an email from likely deal or I believe Yahoo with the information so don't worry about that all of that is coming your way but yeah let's hear it Steel. yeah you'll you'll get an email and an evite uh invite shortly after uh the episode airs on Friday so don't worry about that you'll get an invite but the 10 selected randomly selected listeners for the fa the fantasy hockey podcast league Mark oh, O'Donnell no. cracking it off the first top he was the first one randomly selected in the draft so congratulations yep. Mark O'Donnell and I'll just, I'll just, you know, I'll go through them quick. quick. So, Mark O'Donnell, Blake Creamer, Brock Carroll, Matt Westfall, Ryan Jackson, Chris Tarr, Spencer Frame, Austin Malunas, Adam Gold, and Nelson Kirk. So, congratulations. Pat on the back. Welcome Man. to the first annual Fantasy Hockey Podcast Fantasy League. Congratulations mm -hmm. to you all. Uh, for everyone that wasn't, uh, you know, obviously randomly selected, Thank you so much for all the support again. There is always next year. We're going to continue doing this every single year. It might even get bigger and bigger every single year. So who knows? I but think it will. It probably will. But as of the first annual, we had to start off with just a 12-man league. So 
Congratulations mm-hmm. to all 10 of you out there for being randomly selected. And we're looking forward to getting this league going. I'm really excited about this flip. And, and I know yep. you are too. Hey, the draft is on Thanksgiving Monday up here in Canada, but when you dust off that second or even third slice of pumpkin pie and that tryptophan <laughs> is setting in, grab yourself a Red Bull and cola, maybe grab yourself a little rum and coke, spice things up a bit, grab the laptop, and tap in with your boys from the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast because... We just appreciate you guys showing interest. You want to see what Steel and I got. You want to see what we're made of fantasy-wise. I want to see what our people are made of, Steel, because there's some people in these DMs talking a pretty big game, (laughs) throwing around Mark O'Donnell. Speaking of which, if you're listening, Mark, he's giving me all his credentials on (laughs) Yahoo, all the wins. I just hope that our listeners are coming correct because I'm coming for that 240, and I know you are too, but realistically, Steel, we are just blessed to be able to do this for fun and jump in a league with our listeners. And I, I really do think we're on to something here because we might also have to look at maybe a locked on fantasy hosts, hosts only league. Yes. Just the, you know, maybe the Sens guys. We'll get the Dallas Stars guys in here. Justin Pooney, a locked on Canucks, I'm sure would do it. So there's lots of ways that we could take this. Yeah. And, and that's just you know, that just creates more fantasy leagues as well. You know, I'm already in for this uh, heading into this upcoming oh, season. So that would be great as well. But I'm excited for this league. I'm excited for all the banter that's going to be flying between you and I, as well as our listeners yeah. and fans. But real quick, before we dive into the Jason Robertson signing for the Dallas Stars, mm. I'll break down the league settings. It is going to be on ESPN. So that is the uh, the lead, or the app, uh, the website we're going to be using for the uh, fantasy hockey uh, league. Uh, So it is going to be on ESPN. There are 20 roster spots for your fantasy team. Three centermen, three right wingers, three left wingers, four defensemen, one utility spot, two goalies with a maximum of three goalies on your fantasy team, as well as four bench spots and two injured reserve spots. It is also going to be a a head-to-head categorical league as well. So there are 11 Mm -hmm. categories. Um, You know, I... I kind of messed up here. I probably should have written them down, but it is goals, assists, plus minus, hits, blocks, special team points, uh, game-winning goals as well. And then for the goalie uh, goalie categories, it's wins, goals against average, and save percentage. So there are 11 categories in this league. And again, it is going And all to be- that info is in the league details. So yes, make sure you it, check w- it will be in the league details. So once you get the invite, uh, sign up, register, you'll see all the league settings. You'll, you, you know, you'll get the feel of it. And obviously, again, the draft, is on October 10th, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Yes, sir. And if there is enough interest, if we have enough spillover, hey, Steele and I might open up a second league. We might get spicy here, people. So make sure you're tuned in, subscribed, followed to all the accounts. They all still hold true. Make sure you're doing that because we might be opening up a second. If there's enough of you out there who missed out on this, let us know. Continue to give us the feedback. Let us know what you want to hear and see. We are here for the people. We got Jason Robertson reaction coming up right after the break. We have some players here, Steel. I got some tabs open on some <laughs> names that people definitely, if you haven't done your draft yet, you got to be looking at acquiring these guys. They are in for big time seasons, and they are going to be the kinds of players that will make and take you over the top. Another thing that takes you over the top, sprinkling wagers at betonline.net your number one source for football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every single game you need. As always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all your sports wagering info, live betting, up-to-the-minute scores, and more. It's the fastest and easiest way for you to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Flip, let's dive into the Jason Robertson signing four years, $7.75 million term deal, but still Mm -hmm. getting, securing the Mm -hmm. bag as well and flip. Before we even dive, mm. dive into this, uh, you know, contract for Jason Robertson and the Dallas Stars, I want you to take back everything you said from Cole Caulfield <laughs> and Tim Stutzla. Jason Robertson is starting. He's signed now. You got it. Come on. You got to do it. There we go. Now there that we, we go. know he's playing, <laughs> look. 
The guy led the league in game-winning goals last year, Steele. You know I love that category. I understand that sometimes that goal, that goal game-winning category can give away some of those. You know, you score the fourth goal, and then the team comes back and scores three, and you still get the game winner. That's not the case with Jason Robertson. He has ice in his veins. I listened to the episode the other day, and you said that on repeat. He is clutch. I will take back what I said, because <laughs> if I knew that he was for sure going to play, hey, a week ago, we didn't even know. But – 31 mil, four-year deal. This kid is for real. And I think we're just starting to see, you know, you know, I like saying this. One really good season from Jason Robertson. I think he's just scratching the surface of what he can do. I could see triple digits very easily with this kid year in and year out. Also, shout out to a good Niagara Ice Dog product. You know, I love me some of that action. <laughs> Jim Nill comes out and says he's an integral part of the press of the present and future in Dallas. And I think Jim Neal needs be. that tattooed on his forehead because that could not <laughs> hold more true. But yeah, Steele, we knew it was kind of getting done. They needed to get it done. And I think you and I can agree the bottom of that Western Conference is pretty wide open at the bottom. Aside from those top four or five teams, I don't know. Dallas might not have enough firepower, but a couple of good pieces. Jake Ottinger is solid. They're going to be on the bubble for a wild card spot. Look, and that's what I said in last episode as well. Like, it's the, it's the one team I really can't pinpoint if they're yeah. going to be successful or just you know not you know unsuccessful this upcoming season. With the signing though, uh, obviously able to get a deal done. They're probably both happy on both sides. But if I had to assume uh, what yeah. they what Robertson was looking for, I, I'd probably be looking at the Johnny Goudreau signing. You know, seven uh -huh. years, $9 million in that area. You yeah. probably wanted to stay for long term. But again, like I said, the Dallas Stars organization, their hands were tied because of the Tyler Sagan, Jamie Benn, a couple of those other contracts. So not much they could do there, but happy they could get this contract done and the signing done. And Jason Robertson is going to be starting the season. Yeah, yeah. Led the Stars in goals, power play goals, shots on goal, shooting percentage, second with 79 points behind Pavelski. Uh, you know, and he got that done in 74 games. So what yeah. does he do with another eight games this season? And now a contract secured in his back pocket, you know, probably another nasty season from Jason <laughs> Robertson. These five guys that I'm looking at those steel and that I'm sure you're looking at too, also in line for big time, nasty seasons. We've looked at a lot of different angles for this fantasy draft preparation. So this might sound a little bit like other times where we've brought up players that we like, but I really do think the players that I'm mentioning today, you know, some of them might be bolder takes than others. If you can get even three or four of these guys on your team, I think they're in for huge ones. And number one is a guy that I've said before, but when looking at his ability to fill out almost every important category, including blocks and hits and shots on net, Marit Sider, the reigning Calder yeah. Trophy winner. I have my eyes all over this kid. I've seen the comments on the YouTube channel, taking him as high, along with guys with David Pasternak. That might be bold because Pasternak is for sure the real deal. But at seven goals and 43 assists last year, Steele, for 50 points, 161 blocks, 151 shots, and almost two, or sorry, almost 200 shots on net. I think this Marit Sider kid is in for a mega season and one in which if you have him on your roster, your D is already probably ahead of the competition. Look, he's on my list as well. He was, you know, he was the fifth player yes. I actually put on here, even though it's not in order. Yes. But Mo Sider, I think he puts up 60. No order, I, I think yeah. he puts up 60 points with all the with all the new additions Detroit had this offseason. And we know Detroit's probably going to be in a ton of high scoring games like we saw last year as well. I think Mo Sider puts yeah. up 60 points over 200 shots, over 200 hits, and 170 blocks. So I think all of those categories, he his stats mm -hmm. are going to be really, really elevated this season. Uh, so I have him on my yes. list as well, who is a must-draft player. But the guy I'm really looking at, and I, I drafted him in, my, in the first mm -hmm. round of my league, so I'm not trying to be biased here, but it's Nikita Kucherov. I really do think he is a must-draft mm -hmm. player. And, and, and in my honest opinion, probably the steal yeah. of the first round. Um, you know, obviously mm. there's some at ninth overall, you yeah, got ninth him, right? overall. So he's falling in that eighth, ninth, 10th area in the first round, but obviously there's some concern with the injuries he's dealt with the past two seasons. I get it. I understand that. But looking at his stats from the start of his NHL career, 2014 yeah. played 82 games, 2015 played 77 games, 2016 played 74 games, 2017, 80 games, 2018, 82 games and 2019, 60 yep. 
68 games, which again, of COVID. So he still played a full season then as well. Yes. He missed the last two seasons with some serious, serious injuries. But when he's fully healthy, and I predict him to be fully healthy because unlike the Tampa Bay Lightning, he hasn't played that many games like they have the past three years because, again, the injuries. I understand mm. it's for concern. But we're talking about a guy who put up 100-plus points, 128 points in two seasons. Oh, yeah. And in those shortened seasons as well, was on pace to put up over 100 points as well. So Nikita Kucherov, a must-draft player. Look, you got the point and the elephant in the room about Kucherov done right away. And it's the only thing you can say against a guy who has been one of the most consistent and effective yes. offensive outputs anywhere in the league. Number two with Kucherov, why I can't even hate on this pick, is his chemistry with Braden Point and Steven Stamkos make that one of the best lines in the business, statistically, underlying metrics, or just by the eye test. Those three guys, when they're healthy, when they're in there together, and they should be this season from the very start, they are lethal. That is clear. The puck moves around with ease. They have speed. They have a lethal shot with both Kucherov and Stamkos. If you're John Cooper and you have that line rolling, the Atlantic division is in trouble next season because no one's stopping that trio. Maybe Igor Shosturkin up in the Metro if he's on a heater. But maybe it's a guy in the Western Conference that I'm looking at in Roman Yossi. After the season he had last year, if it's not for Kale McCarr and a historical season across the board, Roman Yossi has another Norris Trophy. He's the 2019-2020 Norris Trophy winner still. And you and I have mentioned at length about what we think is in store for the National yeah. Predators this year. Some of those little moves, Ryan McDonough coming in, a little bit of pressure off of Yossi on the defensive end, bringing in a Nito Nita rider, another year of Tanner Janot, another year of chemistry for that sweet top line of Duchesne, Johansson, and Philip Forsberg. I think Roman Yossi is going to put up 96 points might be tough to repeat, but I see nothing wrong with 80, 85 yeah. points for a guy who's going to get a lot of assists on a team who's going to score some goals this year, Steel. And I just think he's so consistent. 81 games, 81 games, 82 games, 80 games. This guy is always in there. And I love me some Roman Yossi action. And I do think, those natural predators might be my favorite dark horse pick out of the Western Conference. Dude, I'm so happy you've been saying this. I'm so happy you said this, bro. I've been saying this for the last <laughs> two months that the natural predators are going to yeah, be. You have. The top, uh, they're going to be a top three team in the in the in the NHL this upcoming season. I have. I believe that was one of your bold. It was predictions one of my bold on predictions. Well. It was one of my bold Thank predictions. You. I have a ton of faith with them. I love the direction they're moving in for, and I'll keep it going with the natural predators and a must draft cool. player. You see sorrows. He is a must-draft oh, goalie for any yep. fantasy team. Yep. He had 38 wins last. He had 38 wins last year. I think he has 40 plus wins this upcoming season. Um, 40 plus wins this upcoming season. A 9.22 save percentage. Uh, a goals against average below 250. I think he's going to be a top three candidate for the Vesna Trophy this upcoming season. So UC Saros again, another natural predator who is must-draft. Hey. I'm with you 100%. You know, you and I rarely do the swapping of notes on purpose. And this is for good reason, because we want to spark some sort of conversation or debate. There's no debate to be had here. You seen with injury last year, and he just proved how important he is to that National <laughs> Predator's success. They were lost without him, and maybe that's not a bold take. But I would say, right after Shesterkin and the other goalie I'm going to name, UC Soros is going to be the third goalie that I would expect to be nominated or in that mix for the Vesna this year. And the other guy I will get to right after the break because Steele and I are going to continue this conversation. I think you know where I'm going with this pick, Steele, because I'm sticking to my guns. You know, Mr. Sticking I have his a guns feeling. flip over here. You know where I'm going, but why don't you just tell the people what's good here? I have a feeling where you're going, but first, we'll, we'll get to that eventually. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Once again, please make sure you hit the subscribe, hit the follow button. Flip and I appreciate all the love and support out there. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Flip, take us away. I think I know where you're going with this, and I, I have a feeling I'm going to disagree with it. That's okay. I thought about this at length, Steele, because we know how important goaltenders are to the success of any fantasy squad. 
And I really do think, I know we don't love what's going on on the island this year with the New York Islanders. We don't know what's going on with them. But it hasn't really mattered the last couple of seasons for Ilya Sorokin and his numbers. His first two seasons in the league, he's put up a 925 save percentage, 233 goals against, 10 shutouts, and he has just been solid. And I really do think he's right there on the doorstep. I'm sticking to these predictions, Steele. Ilya Sorokin is going to be in the mix for a Vesna trophy this year, and he is definitely must own material for a goaltender. He might not get you that win category. I'll be honest. I can hear the people out there only 26 yeah. wins last year flip maybe the islanders struggle i think the islanders are going to be a little bit better this year i know they might struggle to score goals but they are a good defensive club and they are well coached maybe that's a hard sell on the islanders but it shouldn't be on sororkin he is nasty if you watch any of his games he is just fundamentally sound top to bottom left to right good goaltender covers a lot of the lower end of the crease I love me some Ilya Sorokin. He is must draft. I'm sticking to my gun steal. I think that's the biggest takeaway from this is that his stats are still there and they're and they're great, but it's just the Islanders, the team in front of him, just not producing. And I've yeah. been seeing a lot recently about the predictions of where teams are going to finish this year. Yeah. And a lot of people have the Islanders finishing at the bottom of the division with the Philadelphia Flyers. That's what it is. And I yeah. don't agree with that. I actually have them as a, a as a wild card team. Yeah, and me too. A lot of that do because of Elias Sorokin's play. I don't know if he's a must draft. I don't know if he's a must draft player. I don't know. I don't think he's going to be in the Vesna conversation. I have three other goalies in mind. Uh, UC Soros being one of those, but I still like the guy. I think he's a yeah. top tier goalie, but I'm not sure he's in the Vesna conversation. And that's fair. I'm just that big on the guy's game this year, and I think he is that good. Also, if you're getting seven to eight shutouts a season, which is definitely in his yeah. realm. That makes him worthwhile because if you have him, your goals against, your save percentage, and your shutouts category is probably getting one on the regular just right there. And if he can sneak in a couple of hot streaks, hey, 30-40 wins. I know he only had 27 last year. If the Islanders are better, he's going to have 35-40 wins yeah. this year. Anyway, I have two players left, Steel. How many you got left? The show's getting a little long in the tooth, but I'm feeling this conversation. I got two left as well, and I'll make this guy quick because we've talked about him a lot. But it's Brady Kachuk for me. I think he's Has an early. Yeah. I think he's an early second round pick. I know he slotted down in the third, you know, thirty first overall pick area. I believe he's in that in that uh, category. But mm. it's Brady Kachuk. I think he's an early second round pick. He's probably going to be the only player this year that's going to put up th over three hundred shots, over three hundred hits, and still put up over eighty points as well. So Brady Kachuk mm. is a must draft player in the second round. You and I have done our due diligence on the Ottawa Senators and all of those angles, so I am just going to agree and move on because that conversation has been a lengthy one. One more player steal, and my last guy on here, I, I'm excited to talk about it because for some reason we haven't talked about him enough. But my second last guy, a little mini dynamo on one of the best teams in the league in Seth Jarvis. Okay. He led the Carolina Hurricanes last year in expected goals per 60 and goals per 60 minutes at five on five. I'm not a big underlying metrics guy. I am not a big, you know, stats only guy, but this kid does it both. He passes the eye test. He passes the metrics test. And I really do think where he's playing in that top six in Carolina might be my favorite asset of all, aside from what he can do with the puck. He's playing with Sebastian Ajo and to Toivu Teravainen. That's a nasty line. That top six and that top power play, those two power play units. Oh, wait, he is on that top power play unit as well right now with Sebastian Ajo. I just see a big, big season from him, Steele. And I'm trying to highlight some of these players for our listeners out there that, yeah, I know everyone's going to know about Sororkin. Everyone's going to know about this next guy that I'm talking about. But don't slip. Jump on them up in the draft. Seth Jarvis isn't going to be a top five, top six, top seven rounds. But right after that, he's going to start flying off the shelf. I wouldn't wait that long. I would jump on him in the sixth, seventh round. That's how much I like him. But I think he's in for a big, big season at only 20 years old, Steele. Yeah, he's a very young, talented player for the Carolina Hurricanes. You've talked about him a lot. I'm excited to see what he puts up this year. I'm excited to see. 40 if, points uh, last year in 68 games. So we'll see. I 
I'm excited to see if he backs up all the uh, all the uh, talking you've been putting on him as Thank well. You. But my my last player, and I really I'm not sure how you're going to react, but I really think he is a must draft player. It's Patrick Line of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Gee. 56 points last year in 56 yeah. games. He was a point per game last year, obviously dealt with an injury and mm. some personal matters as well. But I think Johnny Goudreau is going to do wonder for, wonders for this kid's game. Yes, Again, 24-year-old 20, sniper. If he can get a little bit tougher and, again, mm. not get injured uh, you know, so easily, I think he's in for an outstanding season, 85 yeah. points, which he hasn't done before. That's a big. Hey. That's a it might be a bold prediction, but I get. It it. I think you. I think you is going to do wonders, wonders for this kid's uh, for this kid's NHL career. I'm really glad you brought up the Blue Jackets because two things. Number one, I would say Patrick Laine. Sometimes his issues seem to be between the ears. Yeah, he seems to get a little bit moody. He seems to get a little bit rattled when he gets injured, when he gets sick, even, and he seems to have a bit of a bad attitude because everything when it comes to putting the puck in the net. That shot, his speed, his size, and otherwise is all elite. And when he's going, he is one of those streaky players that you, oh, you see line A in the lineup, you know he's getting one or two. I'll say this, my second point about this, the Boone Jenner option. If you have eyes and some opportunity on taking a look at Boone Jenner up the middle between Goudreau and Patrick Line, the guy is going to get a lot of assists this year. He's going to get some looks <laughs> for some goals. I believe he had 22 last year. He's right in that mix. Boone Jenner was yep. a keeper of mine in my dynasty league only because of what I think he's going to do with those two studs. Speaking of a stud steal, and this is fitting that I'm wrapping it up with one of the best players to ever lace him up. And right there after McDavid and some others, I don't think he's fifth or sixth, but he's still in the top 10 in my opinion. It's Sidney Crosby, who I think is in for another really, really good season. And until I see a step back steal, he is still must draft. In 69 games last year, he had 84 points, 31 goals, and 53 assists in 20 minutes of ice time per game. People are saying he's slowing down. I say BS. I say the window is closing <laughs> in Pittsburgh for winning, and that trio was brought back for one more good kick at the can. I don't know what the next few year holds. He said he wants to play three or four more. I know that this season, Sidney Crosby is going to be another nasty fantasy asset, and 84 points – right there in that wheel host is very attainable for a guy who seriously can still get it done at both ends of the ice. The one thing I don't agree with you on is him being a top 10 player in the league right now. I think there's 10 TSN guys. Above disagrees him. with you. I know. Nine TSN, in the I, I, I know. He, I know they do, but I'm not sure he's a top 10, uh, not a top 10 fantasy player in the league. That's, right. That's now. another con. Might be a top I, 10 know, player. Might be a top 10 player, but not a top yeah. 10 fantasy Fair. player. Nonetheless, Flip and I, make sure you're tuning in. Look, this puts us at a little bit of a disadvantage in this fantasy fan base fantasy league. Everyone you knows. Know, everyone knows who we're looking at now, but I like the challenge. I know you do too. So I'm happy about these five must-draft players that we've selected. Thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. For, for your second listen, though, check out Locked On NHL, your daily 30-minute NHL podcast. They, they talk about all things NHL all year long it's free and available on every single podcast platform just like this one right here so make sure you subscribe make sure you hit the follow button and once you do you'll get all the latest episodes of the locked on fantasy hockey podcast if you've made any bets this past week or you know in future bets for the upcoming season good luck with your money out there and we shall see you back here again on monday peace